Gunter Steiner. Gunter Steiner. Gunter. Gunter Steiner. Gunter Steiner. Gunter Steiner has left his role with the Haas team. Gunter Steiner is one of the most recognizable names in Formula One, and when the news of his departure from Haas broke out, it shocked the entire F1 community. Even Gunther's reaction was, I didn't see this coming. So let's take a look at how it all started for Gunther and how it went wrong. Born in South Tyrol, Italy in 1965, he grew up fluent in both German and Italian. Gunther was studying engineering in college, but realized his passion for racing. He dropped out of college and started working as a car mechanic in the World Rally Championship for Mazda Rally Team Europe in Belgium. He then worked as an assistant team manager for Top Run Motorsports and later as technical manager for Jolly Club Motor Racing Team. After that, he managed ProDrive's All-Star Rally Team and won the European Rally Championship. In 2000, he worked under Ford World Rally Team as Director of Engineering alongside drivers Colin McRae and Carlos Sainz, securing consecutive runner-up finishes in the 2000 and 2001 seasons. His Formula One career began at the end of 2001 when Nicky Lauda signed him for Jaguar Racing as Managing Director. Gunther revamped the team structure and reduced costs during his time in charge. However, the Jaguar team struggled in 2002 and saw major restructuring, which resulted in Steiner relinquishing his duties as managing director. In 2004, he served as technical director at Opel Performance Center that used to compete in DTM at that time. At the end of 2004, when Red Bull acquired Jaguar Racing, Gunther was called back and given the technical operations director role at the renamed team Red Bull Racing with Christian Horner as team principal. When Adrian Newey left McLaren at the end of 2005 to join Red Bull, Gunther was given a new task of establishing a NASCAR team in the United States. Gunther then moved to Mooresville, North Carolina and served as technical director of the Red Bull NASCAR team from April 2006 to April 2008. He quit his role following some disagreements with the upper management regarding the direction of development of the team. In an interview, he mentioned that during that period, he decided to take some time off to reflect on how he wanted to remain involved with motorsports. After leaving Red Bull, Gunther stayed in Mooresville, and in 2009, he founded Fiberworks Composites, a company that specializes in custom advanced composite assemblies for motorsports products. Last I checked, Gunther and his family still reside in Mooresville, and it seems there's something about the place that he really enjoys. And I also recently found out what car Gunther drives. Well, he drives a Toyota Tundra. Oh my God! But I guess it makes sense since he lives in the States. Moving on. A few years later, Gunther met with Gene Haas and played a pivotal role in establishing a partnership to create the infrastructure for the Haas F1 team. Together, they collaborated with Ferrari as the engine supplier and Dallara as the chassis manufacturer. Following this groundwork, Gunther was appointed as the team principal. The team made its debut in 2016 with Romain Grosjean and Esteban Gutierrez as their drivers. They began on a high note with Romain finishing 6th in the opening round of the Australian Grand Prix, followed by another impressive 5th place finish in Bahrain. However, the team couldn't sustain this momentum and faced challenges throughout the rest of the season. Grosjean scored all 29 points for the team, securing 8th place in the Constructors standings. In 2017, Kevin Magnussen joined the team, replacing Esteban Gutierrez. The team began the season strongly, but encountered difficulties in the second half. Despite this, both drivers managed to score decent points and the team secured 8th place in the Constructors' Championship for the second consecutive season. In 2018, Haas experienced its most successful year to date, securing a remarkable 5th place finish in the Constructors' Championship. Surprisingly, they outperformed established teams like McLaren and Force India. Despite some teams raising concerns with the FIA about the resemblance of their car to the previous year's Ferrari, the investigation concluded that the design was entirely within the regulations, dismissing any allegations of wrongdoing. 2019 proved to be a challenging year for the team as they finished ninth in the constructors' standings with just 28 points. It seemed like they had veered off course in terms of car development. Additionally, the team was involved in the whole rich energy controversy after they became the team's main title sponsor, at least for the first few races. 2020 was one of the worst years for Haas, with the team once again finishing ninth in the Constructors, but this time scoring just three points. In 2021, Haas made a bold move by replacing both Magnussen and Grosjean with rookies Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. The team decided to prioritize the development of cars for the 2022 season, which featured new regulations rather than focusing on a new car for 2021. As a result, their car was essentially a modified version of the previous year's model, adjusted to meet the revised FIA guidelines. This decision left them with the slowest car on the grid, 
leading to zero points scored and a last place finish in the Constructors' standings. Heading into the 2022 season, Haas replaced Nikita Mazepin with Kevin Magnussen in light of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The team had invested significant effort in developing their 2022 car, and this effort paid off in the opening race of the season. Kevin impressively qualified seventh and went on to finish fifth in the race, benefiting from the technical issues faced by both Red Bull cars. The strong performance continued, with Kevin scoring points in three out of the first four races. However, as the season progressed, the team struggled to keep pace with car development, as well as encountering numerous crashes and failures. The latter half of the season proved to be challenging, as they managed to score only three points in 11 races. Nevertheless, the team achieved a significant milestone in Brazil, securing their maiden pole position, with Kevin Magnussen setting a blistering lap in changing weather conditions. Despite the promising start to the season, Haas concluded the year with an 8th place finish in the Constructors' standings. And I think that has always been a problem with Haas from the beginning. In the seasons where they started strong, they failed to keep up the momentum going and fell behind in terms of car development. The season's crashes proved costly for Haas, straining their already tight budget. Continuing down this path wasn't financially prudent. As a result, they chose to part ways with Mick and brought in Nico Hulkenberg for the 2023 season. With a more experienced lineup in 2023, the expectation from Haas was to improve upon their 2022 performance. The qualifying performance notably improved with Nico reaching Q3 on eight occasions and Magnussen on three. However, and it's a big however, the car struggled with high tire wear during races, causing the drivers to drop positions rapidly. Despite making it to Q3 eight times, Nico only managed to secure points once, highlighting the severe degradation of the car. Additionally, the team faced several technical issues and occasional contact with other cars. There were also a few errors made along the way, such as calling Nico into the pits at the wrong time, which resulted in him being knocked out of Q1 without setting a lap time in the Belgian GP. And despite having two experienced drivers, the team ended up last in the constructors' standings, accumulating just 12 points, less than a third of their 2022 total. There weren't any major crashes during the season, which was a positive outcome. Throughout the season, they struggled to fix the persistent issue of high tire wear, which was quite disappointing. Despite the drivers delivering commendable performances, the limitations of the car hindered their overall results. In 2023, Gunther released a book called Surviving to Drive about his experiences in F1, which I am eager to read now more than ever. Now coming to the important question, did Gunther really deserve to be sacked? Now, addressing this question is a bit uncomfortable because let's be honest, we all adore Gunther. He's an incredible and funny guy. However, as bitter as it may sound, the truth is he didn't meet expectations. Look, I don't believe he was solely responsible for the team's poor performance, but his role was to guide them in the right direction. In the last five seasons, they've just failed to show improvements. In an interview, he mentioned that the Haas team operated close to the budget cap, indicating they had adequate funds. So that wasn't the issue last season. And I know things aren't that simple in Formula One, but did he fail in managing the team and propelling them forward? The simple answer is yes. When there's a strategic blunder or a mistake in tire fitting, it's easy to attribute it to the strategists or mechanics for that particular race weekend. However, when the team consistently underperforms throughout the season, it's the leaders who must shoulder the blame for failing to achieve set targets. While I'm unsure about Haas's specific goals for 2023, I can confidently say that finishing last wasn't part of the plan. We've seen similar scenarios with Alpine last season and Ferrari before that. Like that's just how the sport operates. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. So I wouldn't fault Gene Haas for making changes in the team's upper management. Nobody wants to witness their team languishing at the bottom for years. I'm not suggesting that replacing Gunther will automatically result in improvements for the team. It's a change and whether it yields positive results remains uncertain. If it does, that's fantastic, but if it doesn't, Haas must examine the fundamental issues contributing to their challenges. And the next question is what future holds for Gunther and Haas? Recently, Gunther mentioned in an interview that he's dedicating more time to his family and exploring various opportunities now that he has some free time on his hands. I've heard he's even working on a new book and taking a more active role in his own company. Additionally, he said that he'll be attending a few races this season. Rumor has it he's also been approached by teams from other racing categories, so it would be interesting to see what Gunther's next adventure would be. <laughs> As for Haas, I hope they figure out what they are lacking to be competitive in the midfield and that the new team principal can lead the team in the right direction. 
They're slightly behind schedule in developing the 2024 car and anticipate being at the back in Bahrain, but I think they have the potential to be competitive in the midfield. Their car was quick in qualifying last year, and if they improve their race pace this year, I am certain their two experienced drivers are capable of yielding great results. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more F1 videos. Also, comment down below your thoughts on how you think Haas will perform this year, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ah, ah, ah.